Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. As far as reggae and indeed Jamaican music is concerned, no other artist may ever be as confrontational and radical as the great Winston Hubert McIntosh, aka Peter Tosh. The face-offs between this reggae icon and mystery Babylon, which is represented by the oppressive world systems of government, have since become the stuff of legend. In his lifetime, he not only waged war against Babylon with his music and lyrics, but was also an activist in the streets, demonstrating resistance at every given opportunity and very often receiving brutal repercussions for his trouble that came in the form of incarceration, censorship and savage beatings. Interestingly, the most similar musician to the Stepping Razor in terms of his radical music and activist credentials but not a Jamaican or reggae artist but an eccentric genius African superstar almost 9,000 kilometers away in Lagos, Nigeria in the person of the great Fela Kuti. He was the originator of the fusion of funk, jazz, high life and African rhythms that we now know today as Afrobeats. And just like Tosh, he was as confrontational to the system on a level that's not been seen since. Both Tosh and Felakuti were freedom fighters who used music as a potent weapon. He too had suffered devastating oppression by the Nigerian authorities in the form of numerous beatings, jail time and even a brutal and terrible assault on his home by over 1,000 soldiers that resulted in his house being burned to the ground and his mother dying from injuries sustained in that horrible attack. Not to mention the biggest similarity between Tosh and Fela was a huge unquenchable love for, you guessed it, Herb. Both men were fierce admirers of each other and though thousands of miles apart were like twins. This incredible pair would come face to face in their lifetimes when Tosh embarked on an epic visit to Nigeria in 1982. Let's take a look at the awesome story of what happened when Tosh met Fela Kuti. In late 1981, The Stepping Razor was taking a break after a staggering world tour to promote his album Wanted Dread and Alive. During that tour, he had met with fellow EMI Records artist and Nigerian singer Tony Okosum during a concert in Cuba that was organized by their label. Okosun was also a passionate herb advocate, so both men quickly became close pals. And in the course of conversation, Okosun invited Tosh to visit Nigeria once he could find the time. Tosh had been looking forward to coming to Africa for a while and jumped at the opportunity. So he told his manager, Copeland Forbes, to get to work on their visas and to pack their bags for a trip to Nigeria ASAP. With $10,000 in his pocket, he and his sidekick Forbes hopped on a plane to New York and onwards to Lagos, Nigeria. But due to a mix-up in their schedules, they arrived a day later and Sonia Okosu wasn't able to meet them at the airport and take them to his home as planned. So they decided to spend the night at a hotel and locate Okosu from there. After passing through customs and immigration, they got their luggage out and found a taxi and headed into the city. But on their way, Peter would come face to face with the same Babylon system and oppression that he had fought against back home in Jamaica. Between the airport and the hotel, they would encounter several checkpoints manned by aggressive, heavily armed policemen and soldiers. And at each stop, the policemen would act really hostile until they would look into the taxi and see the man in the back seat was none other than the great Peter Tosh. And each time, they would get all excited and wave the taxi through, and Kuplon Forbes would give them some cassettes as souvenirs. And it worked for the first seven checkpoints, but at the eighth and final checkpoint before the hotel, the police wouldn't budge and after Peter got angry and screamed at them, they retaliated by beating up the taxi driver, declaring them all under arrest before taking them to the police station. And when they got there, Forbes noticed how angry Peter was and told him to wait outside by the car because he knew that Peter would very likely confront them. So Forbes and the driver would go inside to handle the matter. And while waiting outside the station, Peter was recognized and thronged by dozens of fans. Forbes would soon after secure their release after paying a bribe of $10 to the cop who had arrested them in the first place. And when Forbes told Peter how it got settled, the stepping razor became furious. Not because he had to pay a bribe, but he was just angry that they hadn't said it from the start. So they got to the hotel and settled in. They would locate Sonny Okosun, who took them to spend the night at his palatial home before taking them to his hometown of Benin, a few hours drive away from Lagos. Peter was having a ball, but since he arrived, he had been itching to see Felakuti. So after convincing Okosun, the trio would head back to Lagos. And as said earlier, the stepping razor was a big admirer of Felakuti and was also eager to smoke some herb with that Nigerian icon. Felakuti's consumption of herb was legendary and world-renowned. 
And in fact, a popular story goes that sometime in the early 1990s, dance hall legend Shabarax came to Nigeria to play at a concert and would visit Felakuti on the morning of the day of the show. And after a very extensive spliff session, Shaba got so stoned that he couldn't perform later that evening. But that's the story for a different day. If Tosh was the Jamaican king of herb, Felakuti was his African counterpart. So Peter and his sidekick, Copeland Forbes, who set out to find Felakuti in what was a legendary sprawling community nicknamed the Kalakuta Republic. Felakuti, in a show of defiance, declared that neighborhood's independence from Nigeria. That neighborhood was supposed to be a mini country of his own, and in that kingdom, he was truly the king. He always had massive quantities of herb in his home, and due to his fierce criticisms of the government, the police were always looking to catch him and would often raid his home to find evidence to put him in jail. But every single time the police would raid the place, he would always get a heads up and warning from residents of the Kalakuta Republic and would always succeed in hiding a stash to their frustration. And Peter would arrive at Fela's house unannounced. He was playing his saxophone when someone told him that the stabbing razor was looking for him. And Fela was so excited that he ran out to meet them in his underwear. He was really happy to see Peter and took them upstairs for some refreshments. And of course, the first thing he would offer them was the finest and strongest herb that you could find in Lagos. And according to Copeland Forbes, Peter and Fella would roll up spliffs that were the size of deodorant spray cans and chatted excitedly for hours on every single topic under the sun. And Fella would at intervals stop talking, get up and fire away at some mean tunes on his saxophone. Fella was an awesome host and treated them to lots of beverages and food and told his staff to go buy and barbecue a whole goat, which they all feasted on with a large crowd of visitors that thronged Fella's house every evening. Peter and Felakuti hit it off big time and would hang out every evening for the rest of his stay in Nigeria. Kalakuta Republic was always buzzing with activity and there were always lots of visitors from all over the world. Peter would meet lots of local celebrities and popular faces at Fela's house and one evening, Peter would meet Sandra Isidore, the American lady who is credited with inspiring Felakuti's Afrocentric and revolutionary worldview. The friendship that Peter had built with Felakuti you know, was so tight that the stepping razor began to make plans to buy a home and establish a base in Nigeria where he would eventually settle. So after two weeks, Peter would say goodbye to Nigeria and his friends and his bonding with Felakuti was supposed to be the spark of a fruitful musical relationship. The pair were booked to embark on a massive tour of the US in 1984 but what would have been a legendary tour for the ages would never happen as the military junta in Nigeria would throw Fela in jail before it could take off. And in solidarity with his friend, Peter Tosh would opt out of that concert. Felakuti was sentenced to five years in jail by the military government, but was released after two years in 1985 when a new military leader deposed the previous ruler who had thrown him in jail. And with Fela now released, Tosh would visit Nigeria again late that year and went over to spend time with his friend. This time, he would seriously begin to put plans in place to come and settle in Nigeria. But sadly, he would never get round to it before his untimely passing in 1987. And his friend Felakuti would pass away 10 years later in 1997 after a series of health challenges which were exacerbated by decades of physical abuse and brutality by the Nigerian authorities. The pair never got to perform together or share the same stages as I'm sure they were itching to but at the end of the day, it's a pretty cool thing that these two once in a lifetime icons and soul brothers with similar attributes, personalities and life missions met in their lifetimes and became close friends before leaving this world. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe and until next time, Jobless.